Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Show About Science. This is your host, Nate. So, back in the 90s, scientists were hard at work cataloging the genes in the human body. This groundbreaking initiative was called the Human Genome Project. On today's episode of the show, we're going to learn about the sequel, which stars proteins. So, there are about 20,000 genes that make up our DNA. 20,000 genes. And genes are the blueprints for making proteins. So, how many proteins exist in our body, and what can we learn about human health from identifying them? To help me answer these questions, I reached out to today's guest, Neil. My name is Neil. I am director of Northwestern Proteomics, or protein analysis infrastructure, or just the machines and process that we use to uh, weigh molecules, basically, and count atoms. Count atoms. 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 Our journey down the protein rabbit hole began, oddly enough, by looking at the floor in a building right by Lake Michigan. Yeah, so we're in Silverman Hall and staring at the structure of uh, Lyrica. Uh, also called pregabalin, and it's got how many carbon atoms, Nate? Uh, I believe when I last counted it was eight carbon, 17 hydrogen, two oxygen, and one nitrogen. Yep, and this has helped a lot of people in pain from like diabetic nerve pain and other things. And And I think you said three billion dollars it made (laughs) the inventor? Yeah, (laughs) Pfizer sells this drug and it's helped a lot of people. Um, And Rick Silverman here at Northwestern invented it and... Wait a minute, is this another molecule? (laughs) That is cool, that's another inlaid thing on the floor here in Silverman Hall. Yeah, and there's like a little snake or something wrapping around it or ribbon. Yeah, And it looks like one of those oxygen or carbon molecules. Yeah, it's the same color uh, mostly for the decor, (laughs) the (laughs) the decorating. But this is what we call a nucleosome. A nucleosome. So that's supposed to be DNA wrapped Ah. twice around a group of eight proteins. Ooh, that's cool. And, And that's how you get your genome, which is all your DNA, three billion letters, A, G, C, and T's, right? Mm-hmm. And how do you get a, a, it's a meter long if you stretched out all the DNA oh. in your genome. It's this long. Yes, but you wouldn't be able to see it. You, you would. it's so small. You're right. And so how do you pack that into a little 10 micron cell? Or, you gotta break it up. You no, know, you have to package it up. And there's about 100 million of these little balls made of Ooh. proteins. And the DNA gets packaged um, like the old phone cords that get super coiled. How many would that be for the whole body? Like, 10 to the 13, or yeah, I'm using geek speak. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like, sorry. billions or trillions. Yeah, it's trillions. It's 10 trillion different cells that make up your body. Wow. And in almost every one of them, you have the whole genome stuffed inside the nucleus. And this is the representation of just one of those things of DNA wrapped around eight proteins. Exactly. That's, and that's called a nucleosome, but it's just, yeah, it's how we evolved to pack the genome into a cell. This must be what being in college feels like. I mean, I'm just looking at the floor and I'm already learning something new. I can't wait to see how much I'll have learned by the end of this episode. All right, so where are we going next? Uh, yeah, Nate, I thought we would swing down into the uh, instrument bay where we have a lot of uh, instruments that measure how big molecules are and how much they weigh or their molecular weight. All right, sounds good. Let's go. Okay, rock and roll. Do, 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 do. Here we go down. Going down. We even have an elevator that talks to us. Ooh. <laughs> Um, we're going down to the place where we analyze protein molecules. All right, sounds good. Thanks, <laughs> man. And just like that, the doors open, and we're in the basement of Silverman Hall. There's all sorts of science equipment down here. Oh, uh, yeah, I can see it through those windows. One quick walk down the hall later, and we had arrived. Okay, hang on to your hat. So you'll probably hear a lot of background noise. Yep. Yeah, I I definitely do. (laughs) Yeah, what do you see, Nate? Uh, so this thing looks like 
a printer except smarter. That thing looks like a, a big feat of human engineering. <laughs> a bunch of wires, circuit boards. Yep. Uh, oh, this thing looks like a 3D printer except with vials. <laughs> right, yeah. No, and so we, we put in like, we start with like human blood or cells, process it, separate proteins, and then weigh all those proteins. So how do you know what like protein it is that you're measuring? Yeah, that's a great question. That's like the core, the main thing that we're supposed to do in proteomics, proteomics. The, uh, which we can define later. But it's uh, it, it, the analysis of proteins. You want to know which protein. You want to identify which protein it is. And that is another way of saying what human gene gave rise to that protein. And there are 20,300 human genes. And... The way that we do that is to basically take the protein and destroy it, controllably break it up, take it out behind the woodshed, break it into a bunch of pieces, uh, splinter it, get the masses of those pieces, and they are like a fingerprint. Yes, they... the molecular woodshed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's like a sawmill or it's like, yeah. And, and we identify the proteins by breaking them into pieces, measuring the mass of the pieces, and we say, oh, this is from that human gene. And so we can tell which gene the protein is, uh, uh, where it came from, and all the decorations on the protein. What do you mean by decorations on the protein? <laughs> yeah, so when we sequenced the human genome, we were able to tell, okay, well, here's, here should be your proteins, right? Here, 3% of the genome codes for proteins. You know, the 20 amino acids uh, uh, that make up the sequence of a protein? We can predict what the proteins will be. But here's the thing. When you actually create your body and you're living, there's a lot of changes to proteins. And so, yeah, you're predicting which proteins you're measuring. But since the human body is sometimes creating new proteins, you don't know for sure exactly which proteins you're measuring the exact form of the protein. So you may know, hey, it's from this human gene. Oh, okay, that's the identification of the protein. But it comes in like a hundred different forms, different oh. flavors. Yeah, like let's say there's a human gene that encodes the protein ice cream. Okay, great. Then you say, oh, well, we identified ice cream as distinct from other foods. So, okay, we got a protein called ice cream, but that's not enough what is actually driving human biology is all the different flavors of that uh, ice cream. So if you have chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, that's a way of saying different flavors of the same thing. So like in your liver, you could be expressing the chocolate form of the protein. But in your kidney or in your brain, you have vanilla or strawberry, different forms of the proteins. And we call those proteoforms. Vanilla for life. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I think it, that it's the next step after the genome project is to determine all these different flavors of all the different proteins in our bodies. And that's, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. So after leaving the instrument bay, I was intrigued, but I still had a number of questions. And we still need Neil to define proteomics for us. So what is proteomics? It's a great question, Nate. And I, uh, do, you, do you know what genomics is? The genome? What is genomics? Maybe, yeah, okay, <laughs> cool. Like the genome, the human genome is all of our DNA, right? A, G, C's, and T's, those letters that spell out our DNA. So the study of all the genes is genomics. Mm. So the okay. study of all the proteins is proteomics. Pro I protein, see. yeah. And so I should probably have said this earlier, but what is a protein? Wow, that's a foundational question. Yeah. yeah, perfect. <laughs> so a protein is a string of amino acids. So like amino acids are things like lysine, arginine. There's 20 of them. So like as DNA has four letters that A, G, C, and T that make mm -hmm. up the DNA. 
amino acids, there's 20 flavors of amino acids or 20 different kinds of amino acids. And then they just string up and there could be 500 of them in a row. And then you have a 500 amino acid long protein. And when I say sequence them, you, you determine the order of the amino acids. So, oh, it goes lysine, arginine, histidine, tyrosine, proline. And then you determine that 500 of them in a row. That is a protein, and it folds up, and it goes off and does jobs in your body. And so the amino acids, they're, they're like a kind of molecule, and they have, like, their own atoms. So, like, mm -hmm. just take any one of them, like lysine, I think you said. Sure. And so, like, what molecules would be in a typical amino acid? So you remember down on the floor you saw the drug Lyrica on the mm -hmm. floor? That is basically a, a, like an amino acid. Mm, so it would have like carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen in an amino acid? Yep. So really those four molecules are the building blocks of amino acids, proteins, and the, the body. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. You're built up in layers. And so you start with atoms in the amino acids, then the amino acids string together, form a protein. Proteins get together and form parts of cells, and then you have cells, and that's what constructs your body and keeps you healthy. I asked Neil to demonstrate how this works or how this could work in a protein, and what he did was he decided to invent a whole new protein on the spot. So tell me the first letter. Um, I think E. Let's do E. And then L, V, I, S... <laughs> <laughs> and then P R E S L E Y. There you go. All right. Th those are all that that would spell a peptide. That would spell a protein. Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley. And just like that, we had sequenced the Elvis Presley protein. Now, this protein could actually be made, but it doesn't currently exist in real life. You can make it and. Analyze it. The Elvis Presley protein. It's the Elvis Presley protein. <laughs> All right. Uh, Elvis has left the building. No, he hasn't left the building. He's just in the basement being analyzed. Don't worry. We'll come back to him later. But before we get back to Elvis, we need to talk a little bit about the Human Genome Project. So what was the Human Genome Project and how does it relate to proteomics? Yeah, that's a great question, right? So the Human Genome Project was a project funded by the United States government for about $4 billion. And it ran between 1993, say, and 2003, somewhere in that decade. And it was this amazing big science project. It was like the moonshot. It's like, okay, we're going to the moon. And we just did this amazing thing, being able to map and sequence the human genome, which is to determine the 3.1 billion, with a B, letters of the genome. So we, we were able to, at the molecular level, the level of chemistry, to sequence uh, our DNA, and that was just a revolution in understanding biology. So how is proteomics kind of the sequel to the Human Genome Project? Well, that's a great word, sequel. I, I like that a lot. It, it, it is. It's, a, it's an obvious next step. Not to say that it's easy, but once you have the sequence or you know the genome, what we know now, 20 years later, is that there's 20,000 human genes, each of which creates a protein. And that protein goes off and does things. It has a life of its own, and it comes in many different flavors, and it has many different functions. Like, so like in your liver or your kidney or your eyes, you will have different proteins that make up your body. And this is unknown. This is a frontier that has not been mapped out and it's really holding us back for improving people's lives 
and detecting disease earlier and more precisely. So the Genome Project was $4 billion. We have a similar project of about that scale, a, a 10 year long, it's called the Human Proteoform Project. And it would determine a few billion proteoforms for a dollar each. Wait, a dollar each? Yeah, so in 1995, along with very questionable music in that decade, <laughs> we, had, uh, we had reached a dollar per base. So to sequence DNA, like A, G, C, C, T, A, there's only four letters, we could do that as a species, right? Human beings invented the technology to do that for one dollar per base. So if it was three billion bases in the genome, how oh, much would it be? Three billion, three billion dollars. That's right. And so that's all I'm, <laughs> we're saying. A group of like 400 scientists around the world kind of got together and were like, hey, we need to do the same thing, a dollar per protein form. And that's the human proteoform project. And what we would do, like for the Elvis Presley protein, mm -hmm. it like, let's see. The made up Elvis Presley protein. That's it. <laughs> It is a made up. We apologize to our listeners. You do not have Elvis Presley inside of you. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, and so if you were to sequence this made up Elvis Presley protein, you would spell out the letters, the 12 letters, and it would be, let's see if I can do this. Uh oh, this is a quiz. It's glutamic acid, E, and then L is leucine, V is valine. Isoleucine is I, S is serine, mm -hmm. P is proline, R is, uh, wait for it, arginine, <laughs> E is glutamic acid, S is serine, leucine again, E again, lots of E's. And everybody's into Wordle, right? Have you heard this Wordle? Oh, I, I, I do Wordle every day. I also do Wordle every day. Wow, I'm going to have to look up what the heck Wordle, uh, Wordle is. Yeah, I'll, I'll Wordle. start it for you. Okay. And then just to finish off, Presley, it's E is glutamic acid. And then Y is tyrosine. And that's what it means to sequence a protein, Elvis Presley. And they each have a mass. So like E is 129, L is 113, V is 99. And what, what do those numbers mean? That's the mass of all the atoms. So the each atom has an atomic mass. And so if you... I, and that's like their number on the periodic table, That's right? exactly right. All right. They each have a mass, right? On the, on, yeah, perfect. And so the, the value of knowing the mass of the protein is it, it can be used to identify the protein and it has all the decorations on there as well, the mass of the chemical changes to the protein. But here's the thing, this is why we need the human proteoform project to generate the phone book <laughs> or the catalog uh, of all the proteoforms uh, that exist in our cells and in our body fluids, because then the mass, we would know what that thing was. And so it's sort of a discovery technology development project, but directly tied to human disease because all diseases involve human proteins. So you got into like science and scientific engineering at a young age, but when and how did you get interested in proteomics? Yeah, in the 90s, I um, went to graduate school, and I was interested in proteins. I was interested in enzymes. So enzymes are proteins that, that do a specific uh, thing in your body, and that put me on a course to study proteins and how they work, how they're modified and decorated, and, and that can change their function. Like, you could turn a protein on or off. How? There's a switch called a, well, do you want the geeky word? Or yes. Do you, you do. Okay, we're all in. For, <laughs> I love it. It's called a post-translational modification. Or I assume a PTM. A PTM. You know, sorry, I'm pounding the table because you get, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> a PTM. That's right. It's a, we all are running around. Hey, how do we detect PTMs and, and 
detect what they do? How do we assign their, their function in our bodies? And that's, that's what I'm we I'm writing do. PTM on the whiteboard nearby. That was what that sound was. <laughs> PTM, that's right. Like Elvis Presley, the letters that you can add on top of the letters a decoration, a PTM, and, it, and that could turn the function of that on or off. And that's why we need to know all the decorations. Is there like an example of a PTM that like people don't really know about, but they use like every day? Oh yeah, so there's, there's about uh, 300 different decorations, different PTMs known in biology. And, but there's some really common ones, like, uh, and we're, we're sort of done discovering them, but, but like uh, there's one called phosphorylation. It's a phosphorus with four oxygens. Oh. And then that gets stuck on a serine mm. or a tyrosine or a threonine. Any of those amino acids you stick a phosphorylation on. And guess what goes crazy in cancer? What? Phosphorylation. Mm. The whole signaling network of the cell gets out of control, and that is what drives your cells to proliferate and for people to get really sick. And so you want to turn that off. Right. You want to know exactly that, how phosphorylation is happening in the cells. And that's why we need to do phosphoproteiform measurement, which now we're getting really geeky and long words. But yeah, we just need to know, basically, it's just what protein molecules are there. So after talking to Neil, I was thinking, this all is so cool. But it also seems really hard and complicated. So can any, like, person just do this work, or does it take a very smart scientist? People, when they approach science, they think, oh, I can't do that, right? It's so hard to understand. You're helping to show people, it's just a decision. Like, I'm not that, people, I mean, I hustle a lot, I try really hard. But I wasn't gifted with, like, you know, what I would right. consider, like, I you mean, know. a scientist can come from anywhere. Yeah! It's like in Ratatouille, anyone can cook, anyone can science. Anyone. <laughs> <laughs> anyone can science, and you just, it's just what you choose to spend time on. Mm -hmm. And it's really, we need so many more people in STEM, you know, careers, and to be persistent. And I think more and more people are, and they will. Well, whether you choose to spend your time cooking or sciencing, not a word, but I'm going with it, <laughs> uh, you are always welcome to listen to the show about science. So thank you for being on the show, Neil. Thanks, Nate. Uh, great to spend some time with you. And thanks for your interest in proteins. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool subject. There you have it, folks. The show about science is complete. Music on today's episode was composed by the amazing Breakmaster Cylinder with additional music by Epidemic Sound. And as always, our theme song was composed by Jeff, Dan, and Teresa Brooks. Okay, Dad, you can shut the recording off.